And now the adventures of Nick and Willikins. This is England. Actually, that's a lie. We're really getting off on the wrong foot here. I don't want you thinking that I'm one of those unreliable narrators. No, this is not England at all. This is, in fact, a barely coherent caricature of England perpetrated by two men who have never even left North America. Consequently, the game you're about to play will almost certainly be riddled with inaccuracies, anachronisms, and bad accents. Like, truly terrible accents. You people don't even want to know. Anyway, they dragged me out of retirement to tell this story, and I'm not about to waste my extremely valuable time defending the ill-conceived choices of its writers. So, moving on. <clears throat> this is England, and this is the ancestral home of the wealthy and powerful Nick family, currently presided over by its last surviving male heir, young Nick of Nick Hall. Assisting Nick in the extremely complicated business of washing and dressing himself, along with the general maintenance of Nick Hall itself, we have this man. He answers to the name Willikins, but his young master has called him so many other things. Willikins is also one of the last of a dying breed, a breed of dedicated manservants tirelessly devoted to the well-being of their assigned charges, no matter the circumstances. I cannot overstress the importance of following the instructions of one's master. No matter how seemingly misguided, unethical, or even mortally dangerous they might be, ours is to serve, not to question. All of this being said, one does have some latitude when it comes to addressing one's betters. Traditionally, it is acceptable to adopt one of the three basic attitudes as observed and practiced by the great Western powers of servitude. The first, and one to which I must admit a bit of bias, is the British method, which stresses politeness and civility. This method is kind without being overly familiar, good enough to sustain an empire of nearly a thousand years, so certainly good enough for the likes of you. Second is the one preferred by our American brethren, the friendly approach. Presenting the illusion of being the master's equal, despite the fact that you both clearly know which of you is the lord and which is the lordly. Finally, there's the aggressive method, typically employed by our old friends, the Germans. No great surprise there, while obviously not advocating outright hostility towards the master. It does emphasize the notion that even the most noble among us may, on occasion, require a bit of helpful prodding. Right, so, young Willikins, kindly choose one of these methods and demonstrate it to me in the rest of the class. I'd be more than happy to demonstrate it for you, my friend. While I personally find this an utterly reprehensible way to compose oneself, this is indeed a correct application of the friendly American method. Mr. Willikins, you'll make a fine manservant someday. Willikins, you're the worst manservant what ever lived. Now stop daydreaming about your boring past and tend to my needs. So begins another exhausting day for me here at Nick Hall. Too right, Willikins. As per our usual routine, I have prepared an itinerary -ary 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 of daily activities for you. Oh, good. Item one. Much like the princess in that story about the wee-stained mattress, I have detected something amiss with my bed. Have a look under there, won't you? Very good, sir. Should have been in bed four hours ago. At least I get to put on a lurk here. Thanks, Validity. I appreciate you. Have a good night. Get some rest. Ah, the sound I've come to loathe. Which sound is that? Ah, one of the many sounds I have come to loathe. 
Well, if you insist. Here I am. It's about bloody time. Ah, the sound I've come to loathe. Oh, shit. Ah, so there is something under here. A charger for a mobile phone. That's what we call cellular phones in England. Rather. I'd be concerned about these if I thought Master Nick had even the remotest concept of what any of it actually meant. I'd be concerned about... Step by step, heart to heart. Master Nick threw this and said, Fetch, Willikins, but neither the dog nor I were sure which of us he meant, so it's remained under the bed ever since. At least you're alive. I mean... <laughs> At least somebody didn't kill you. That's pretty pretty good, right? I'm sorry, Baby Shark. I suck at consoling people. On loan to us from an old text adventure. I won't bother making a more specific reference as you're not likely to get it anyway. Master Nick refuses to acknowledge that he hid these here, which is just as well as I refuse to touch them, so what it's sort of a stalemate. I'll just tidy this up then. Adequate job, Willikins. Five out of ten. Honestly, you must try harder. Oh, must I? Now then, item the second. I'm hungry. You're hungry, sir? Hungry with an H. Now, I know you have some food squirreled away on your person, and I demand that you feed it to me forthwith and hence. Here too. And such. Hello, Sir Winston. Hello, Sir Win. Hello, Lady Thatcher. Hello, Rick from the Young Ones. Master Nick's family sigil. Actually, it's a Z that I turned sideways. Don't tell anyone. Your secret is safe with me. There he is, the person to whom I have dedicated my entire working life. Ready for some breakfast, old friend? We're not friends, Willikins. You must never forget your place. And that place is, you're basically my slave. Of course, sir. I don't know what came over me. <laughs> Master Nick is still, to the shock of literally no one, in his bed. <clears throat> Look, kids. Big Ben. Parliament. No, it's okay. Thanks for even trying. Yeah, I'm not good at consolement. But I'm sorry that you have to go through whatever your work is putting you through. Or whatever somebody else is putting you through. The dog's bed costs more than I make in a decade. So naturally, the little bastard hasn't touched the thing in at least as long. In keeping with the household-wide ban on French... Master Nick insists upon referring to that as the Iron Ceiling Dangle. Master Nick's great good Unc Grendel Thaddeus Q. Nickington IV. And some unknown gentleman upon his back. If I were a cat, I would knock this off the table. But I'm not, so I won't. I hate this thing. It knows why. I'm honestly not sure if Master Nick has found a dog food that strongly resembles diamonds, or if he's trained his mangy little dog to actually eat diamonds. 
Neither would surprise me. He named the dog Willikins, which I was sure would cause confusion. Not for me, it doesn't. That settles that, then. Absolutely not. I don't know where this mangy thing has been. Or, more precisely, I know exactly where it's been. This is a charger for a mobile phone. How it ended up under Master Nick's bed is anyone's guess. Hey, Lena. I have endeavored to anticipate Master Nick's needs by preparing this. One of his favorite dishes. He won't want it, of course. But one must go through the motions, mustn't one? I'm not sure why I bother. He'll inevitably reject this and any subsequent offerings, no matter what they are. Sums up my existence rather neatly, I suppose. Pizza, hamburger, sir. Cool, that old thing, you made me that yesterday. It's rubbish. Bung it down a loo. Of course, sir. That'll be the first of, no doubt, many then. Hey, who's gonna make you cry? What's happening? Yeah, that's a pizza burger. Pizza hamburger. It's a rubbish bin. Rubbish goes in here. And yet you're not in it! Well, aren't I a hoopy frood? And they say we British don't take good care of our teeth. I've never seen that object before in my life. Makes water appear as though by magic. Say it right. Oh, I do beg your pardon. As though by magic. Gotcha, gotcha. It's a sink or Basin? Blast, where's my English to American dictionary? There appears to be some writing on that bottle, but I can't read it from here. Cool, Willikins! Am I owed a tax incentive for employing an illiterate? You've never paid a tax in your life, sir. In fact, I'm rather concerned that... Nobody cares what you think, Willikins. You can't even read! Full of shredded newspaper. That's my medically prescribed confetti. You leave that alone. Hilarious. Quadruple ply. We do live extravagantly. This is a device for cleaning French bums. It's criminally underused. Where there was one set of footprints, that's where I was carrying you. Inspiring. Oh, bother, the deer's run off. These are meant to say N plus S, meaning us. No, I don't get it either. Also, that's not actually what they say, so I suppose that's as close to resolved as we're likely to get round here. That's Mr. Quackers. He's mine, and I love him. Here in England, we refer to the esteemed gentleman as Master Bubble. <clears throat> Now 
that that important business is settled, I want you to go downstairs and prepare me some proper brekkie. You know what I like. I want you to take at least two seemingly incompatible food items and combine them in a new and interesting way. Old and old and boring way, what I've forgotten about. Go on, off you go. <sighs> Very good, sir. Oh, and Willikins. Sir? Remember, it's Thursday, which means you may only prepare the items on my revised menu of foods what I will only eat on Thursdays. You will know these foods when you see them. Right, that thing. Very, as I said once already, good, sir. This seems impractical. I regularly have to assure Master Nick that a boogied man does not, in fact, reside inside this wardrobe. What's up, Cosmo? Yeah, I think I will. I came across it when I was looking at point-and-click games. It's, it's free to play, so I figured I'd just try it. I've been playing it for 10 minutes, basically, so I don't know yet. I like the humor. Like all cartoon characters, Master Nick only truly has one change of clothes, and this is it. Alright, bye Cosmo, have fun. Actually, we call these trousers. <clears throat> Sock it to me? It's a coat. Did you really expect a unique remark for each of these items? This is for when Master Nick drops a dope banger at the club. Two lefts. Obtained after Master Nick won a pub bet that two lefts make a right. Ah, yes, for those occasions when Master Nick feels like resembling a turtle. Or as we typically call it, Wednesday. My god, this man has the head of a coat hanger. Hmm. Master Nick made one of the guards at Buckingham Palace laugh, and so, in keeping with ancient tradition, he was allowed to keep the hat. Why would you ask her that? How do you think it went? <laughs> ah, yes, the famous Deerstalker hat, as made famous, of course, by the great American author, Mark Twain. Bow ties have never been cool. Is there anything more quintessentially British? Only if you eat beans directly out of this hat. Which, of course, Master Nick has done. From Master Nick's great white <gasps> hunter phase, until he realized he was only one of those three things. Patriotism in its purest form, a necktie. It opens and it closes. Around here, that counts as dual purpose. It's for marking pattern notations on fabric in white. That's not a drawer, it's just painted on. Master Nick is convinced he's a vampire and it would break his heart to discover otherwise. In theory, this mobile phone is a vast improvement over the old landlines. But this model won't stay charged for more than 15 seconds, so it might as well be a bloody landline. <laughs> the battery for this mobile phone is bereft of life. 
me. It rests in peace. And that's quite enough of those references now, thank you. That is a bit of a silly walk you're doing, Willikins, now you mention it. Animators cost money, sir. I'm doing my best. <laughs> I'd like to see an American try to plug something in here. I have no idea who this is. <clears throat> Hello, Sam. I mean, Max. Ooh. I... Oh my god, I can't believe it. I got a reference. These clothes have been freshly laundered, but now they're affixed to the floor with sock glue. I got a... I got a reference. I'd like to see an American... In theory, this mobile phone. I got a reference. Rejoice. Ooh, brown. Master Nick likes to pair this one with his strangely erect necktie. Hello, third wig. What, are you expecting <laughs> it to sing a little song? This isn't France. I do hope we've been very clear on that point. Master Nick was rather proud that he could locate his own ear, so we marked the occasion with a statue. It's a statue. Yuck. Somewhat surprisingly, the musculature of this statue is in no way exaggerated. The west wing is approximately 80% asbestos by design, so it's probably best to steer clear of that. This one is new lefty. No, I don't get it either. <laughs> Just a vase, nothing special about it. I believe this one is called The Unicorn is in Captivity and Wishes It Were Still Dead. Yeah. Exquisite. Willikins, prepare my food and bring it to me at once. I am duty bound to attend to Master Nick before I dare attend to any other person, place, or thing. We had to pay that tiger 60 quid to lie down and pose for that. Oddly, the puppet's lips never moved, but Master Nick's did. Don't know why that dog's so unhappy. It makes more in a year than I do. This used to open, revealing a button that did nothing. Mercifully, it's since been sealed shut. Makes your mom an uwa kind. There was once a descriptive audio service that accompanied this painting, filling the hall with a constant ear-piercing howling. Somehow it became disengaged. Who knows how these things happen? This was identical to the bust over there, but we left it on the dash of the car on a hot day. You good?
Roasted chicken, delish. Master Nick modeled for this one by pressing his face against the screen door. Sorry, sometimes he has like nightmares or something. This isn't a painting, it's a plant. His name's Charles. This isn't a paint. Charles the plant. The plant. Spicy ramen and spicy cheese ramen. You're too lazy to make those? Wouldn't they take the same amount of time? It's a door. Yeah, we don't have a where? special word for door here. It's the same as your American doors. Yeah, but where does it take me? Oh. Oh. That's where it takes me. Boil and mix and stuff, gotcha. Yeah, the, the only way that I make ramen is, I just make, I don't even make it how you're supposed to make it. I make it the laziest way. Um. Literally, okay, this is how I make ramen. I put two cups of water in a bowl. I heat the water for five minutes. I put the block of ramen in. I heat it for three and a half minutes. And then I put the spice stuff in. The flavor, not the spice. I put the flavor in. And then I eat it. That's it. That's what I do. You're supposed to boil water. You're supposed to fuck. No. Eh, wrong. I don't have time for that. Not the magic kind, I'm afraid. I've never had, like, the cup ramen or whatever. I've only ever had the block ramen. Not actually the last unicorn, as seen in the book and the movie of the same name. This is, in fact, the penultimate unicorn. Behold the thylacine. All right, I'm beholding. Now what? Snooker? Oh, that's a bad miss. Oh, that's a bad miss. Snooker table. What the hell? Master Nick planted the other antler in the back garden <laughs> some time ago. And yet, no deer have sprouted in that spot. Hedge maze of doom seems to be coming along quite nicely, by which I mean horribly. True gentleman's pursuit. So naturally Master Nick hasn't come anywhere near these. Master Nick insists that Antelope rhymes with Penelope. Just put water in a cup for five minutes and then add it, then boom, down. Gotcha. I fear I did all the reading I'm ever likely to do at Cambridge. Master Nick has threatened to have my eyes hobbled if I'm ever caught with a book. I think cup ramen... I prefer ramen, not to learn what he means by that if it's all the same. I think cup ramen is a little bit more expensive. Like, it's still cheap, but I'm pretty sure the cheapest that you can get is... the block ramen. Reading all these books is kind of a waste of time. Nothing interesting here. But I could be wrong. Reading all these books is kind of a waste of time. Reading all these... Why is the TV down there? The television is not, at present, on. It's stuck on the channel that tells you what's on the other channels that aren't this one. Oh, 
Oh my god. Please just Until kill someone us. can get out and fix the satellite aerial, I'm afraid this is our only option. What's up, Stefano? Well then, go ahead and bloody fix it already. Please just, seriously, just kill us. Please just kill us. Miss Petunia has threatened castration if I so much as go near her kappa. I assume she means me, but I'd rather not find out, to be honest. Ah, the king of the jungle. Except the part where lions don't live in jungles, nor do they have royalty. So they're basically Americans. They say Master Nick's good great aunt Petunia once had tea with Queen Victoria, which, for those of you who haven't memorized the British monarchs, makes her extremely old. You wanker. Good morning, Miss Petunia, Mum. Mum, I'm not your mum. If I was, I expect I'd have to stop grabbing your bum now, wouldn't I? Fuck. <sighs> Indeed. In my defence, and that's defence with a C, you do have a lovely bum. Well then, I suppose that's a feather in, let's say, my cap. Another lovely morning at Nick Hall. Wouldn't you agree, Miss Petunia? Cool, it'd be lovely uh, if you just acknowledge the unconsummated tension between us. Ah, so we're getting an early start on that then, are we? All I'm saying is, a lady of my advanced years could teach you a thing or two. I've known a lot of gentlemen in my day. Biblically, I mean. And in both houses of sexual congress, if you take my meaning. I do, unfortunately, but now I must be <laughs> literally anywhere other than here. Good day, Mum. Right? What the hell? One day, Master Nick will almost certainly pull one or both of these from the wall and then swing on the chandelier. Which is why I've already invested in a special broom for cleaning his bloody footprints off the wall. A thrilling depiction of that time some blokes threatened a vicar with a cannon and also sang a song to him. Some conspiracy nutters believe there's a cryptic message of some sort hidden in this illustration. Master Nick typically dines alone and seats himself here at the head of the table. On occasion, he'll ask me to join him at what he calls the arse of the table. Oddly, the plant is completely real. It's the pot that's fake. The official name for these is Other Swords. I suppose that helps distinguish them from the, uh, Other Swords. Yet another view of Master Nick's so-called Hedge Maze of Doom. Particularly foreboding in this light, I'd say. Not actually an edible arrangement, though I've been ordered to test that on more than one occasion. We don't actually know this person. I believe we purchased this painting in an estate sale of some kind. An ancient ancestor of Master Nick's, with whom he was also once romantically involved. Our history, like the history of most great English families, is complicated and a bit incestuous.
it's a bin for rubbish. Which is exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, bin. Theoretically, this is for sitting in. But I'm the only person who ever visits this room, and I'm forbidden to sit. So I'm not sure what its actual purpose is. In medieval times, that was used to wash clothes in. Now it's mostly for preparing something that Master Nick calls Trouser Stew. There will be plenty of time for that later. And later still. And pretty much on into infinity. You're witnessing a rare moment in which I have something other than pointless mopping up to do. This magnet lists the telephone number for emergency services, which, here in England, is 999. Ah, the bountiful wonders of modern life. Fearful apprehension, a feeling that something bad will happen. Cool, a new word for me to use somewhere for something. Right? Everything in here, no matter how disgusting it may appear to an outsider, is a completely viable culinary option for any self-respecting Englishman. Or indeed for Master Nick. But I'm only authorized to prepare foods on his lordship's ever-evolving Thursday menu today. There are some fresh sausages in here, however. If nothing else, we have that scurvy problem solved. Keep your filthy jokes to yourself, please. We try our best, despite appearances to the contrary, to maintain an air of dignity here. Could be worse. Could be chocolate smoothie. Ugh. I've heard it said that a true Englishman finds Marmite not only palatable, but delicious. If this is the case, vive la France, I suppose. Master Nick's Thursday menu does indeed <coughs> allow for this particular ingredient. Fresh from the, as it were, teat. Not even the 16th most disgusting food item in this house. Some cultures might look at an animal's organ and deem it inedible. But those cultures aren't British. Oh, this is indeed a real thing. <coughs> Look it up, nerds. When you simply must have the briny, disgusting flavor of ruined cucumbers seeping into any food that has the misfortune of touching it. Jesus. An impulse purchase after Master Nick went through his Yan Can Cook phase. Unsurprisingly, it's never been used. Well, for food preparation at any rate. These were not here an hour ago, and I know for a fact that Master Nick has not left his bedroom since then. He must have some sort of hidden dumb waiter or something. You say apricot, and I say apricot. Only one of us is correct. And it's me. Apricot, apricot. Apricot? These are just biscuits. They've nothing to do with digestion. Apricot? If I had a pound for every time I've had to explain what Jaffa cakes are to non-British people, I'd be dead.
apricot. The rats in Nick Hall developed a peculiar tolerance for arsenic, so we've upgraded our arsenal accordingly. Master Nick insisted on the sort of washing soap that's deliberately abrasive to my hands. For reasons that are best understood by his <coughs> lordship, there's a completely intact and disturbingly warm piece of toast jammed in the drain. Master Nick's Thursday menu does indeed allow for this particular ingredient. Ew. Perfect for raw chicken, raw pork, and any other disease carrying slabs of unprepared animal flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, salt and pepper. Inspired after a trip to the bank, Master Nick insisted that we have this knife secured to the counter to prevent it being stolen. It's probably best if he doesn't know about all the other items around the hall that I'm carrying around with me at any given moment. Ew. Sausages on toast is Master Nick's cockney rhyming slang for sausages on toast. Not quite sure he's got the hang of that. Ew. As requested, by which I mean ordered, I've combined two seemingly incompatible food items to create this. <laughs> A fine, upstanding British fish if I ever saw one. Well, technically these aren't so much upstanding as they are down hanging, but the point remains. Now I've got a haddock. Good. <clears throat> the H is most decidedly not silent. Master Nick insists upon having at least eight stone of potatoes available at any given moment. I believe this was after he'd seen a documentary about Elvis on the telly. I'm not prepared to say what this is, but it's most certainly not garlic. We are not, I feel it's important to point out, French. Okay. Wine's fine. Stuck away in storage when Master Nick couldn't work out how to type with them on. This would be tree number 36, I believe. I finally convinced Master Nick that the Victorian practice of decorating with working candles was, to put it mildly, unsafe. Technically, this is the sequel, Mannequin 2 on the move. The original was, as is so often true, far superior. We used to store this on a top shelf, but it kept rolling down and hitting Master Nick on the head, concussing all manner of alternate personalities into him. A gift from our neighbor who claims to be in the sanitation industry. I think he forgot the potato there, or at least I haven't seen you clicking it.
didn't click something in here. It appears to be something hidden just beneath this top layer of potatoes. Master Nick has rather cleverly hidden his cold, soggy chips under these raw potatoes. Well, you can't deny there's a certain logic to that. You click the sack, but not the potato. Thank you. Master Nick's Thursday menu does indeed allow for this particular ingredient. Made of apples. Well, mostly apples. A wretched wine of scum and possibly also grapes, though I can't be completely certain of this. An earthy wine with a distinct hint of farce. Not only will Master Nick not tell me what's in this bottle, he refuses to allow anyone to touch it, which is what this note is about. This rope is so rope, Master Nick calls it Mr. Roper. Lit. These are for purely scientific purposes. They contain molasses, and they're only to be used in January. Yes, we have Amazon here as well, only it's Amazon.uk instead of .com. This is just one of the many differences between English and American cultures. See if you can spot some more. I'm good, thanks. You can't see it from this angle, but they say Hamdingers on the side. Great. Great. Master Nick believes this is my favorite toy, but it doesn't even squeak. Every time I straighten that, Master Nick comes down here to crooked it. It's the only time he ever comes down here. I believe that's some sort of Muppet. I don't know <clears> which. <throat> Strategically placed to drip directly on my face whilst I sleep, regardless of the angle. If my upper lip were any stiffer, my face wouldn't work. I should really get up there with a broom, but I keep hoping a life-saving message might appear in it one day. Ironically, <coughs> that rodent is the cleanest thing in this room. I got 20% off this mattress using a code I heard on a podcast. Lit. It's actually much itchier and pointier than it looks, and it already looks quite itchy and pointy. Best to leave that where it is. It's a load-bearing Muppet. Yes, of course, that's brilliant. That will solve all my current problems. Wait, no, sorry. It won't work at all. I don't know why I said that. Positively revolting. Honestly, Willigans, I don't know what you think you're bloody doing in that kitchen. But I've half a mind to just say sod it and prepare my own brekkie. Indeed, sir. Now... Now bung this down a loo and make me something else. Did you pick up the rope in the wine cellar? No. Now get your 
bum and the rest of you down to the kitchen and make me a proper meal. You know what they say, Willikins. Third time's probably going to be rubbish as well because everything you do is rubbish. Is that what they say, sir? Well, that's what I say. Great. be sure, but I expect this does not bode well. Has Nick done something untoward? Is it even possible to do something toward? And if he has, will Willikins remain loyal per the rigidly binding ancient codes of English servitude? Find out well, now. Seriously, you didn't think we'd just stop here, did you? Who would give you just part of a game? That's just Rule. That came from the entrance hall. Much as I am loath to do so, I suppose it's my duty to investigate. Ooh. I'm certain there was no corpse in this room when I tidied in here earlier. <sighs> I suppose I'd better phone someone about this. I dare say he looks familiar, but it's difficult to tell with him lying face down like that. He looks like a mine. I'm certain I don't know any corpses. I really should call someone about this. There's only one telephone in this house, and it's currently upstairs somewhere. This butler has an aggressive face. He can't help it. Listen, if you had to do what he has to do, you would have resting bitch face as well. Probably not a good idea to go smearing my fingerprints all over the poor fellow, especially before the authorities have had a chance to have a look round. And some chips, hell yeah. One assumes he's in there somewhere, given the alternative that he's actually gotten up off his ass. Well, he can stay out of there. That area is off limits to you. The dog's bed costs more than I make, and dead bodies. <laughs> um, he basically has to like do everything that this shitty kid tells him to do. Basically, said I don't wish to alarm you. Good, then bugger off. Still bloody charging because, of course, it is. So I'll just leave it here and use the speaker function. Emergency services, how may I direct your call? Terribly sorry to trouble you, but a corpse has rather abruptly appeared following a suspicious series of sound effects in our entrance hall. Blimey, sir, that sounds serious. Our sat-nav tracker shows you're in Nick Hall, is that correct? It is indeed. Well done, miss. We'll send an inspector over at once. I cannot thank you enough. Morning, all. I'm Detective Inspector Bobby of the West End Particulars. Inspector Bobby of the Yard? That'll be enough of that. 
Now then, I'm here about the corpse in your entrance hall. Oh, that thing. And this would seem to be a rather open and shut case. The victim, one Errol of Notnick Hall, has clearly been murdered by you, Mick of Nick Hall. You got nothing on me, coppers. Actually, we've got quite a bit on you, sir. But under the circumstances, the circumstances being that you're rich, white, and clearly male, we can remand you to your residence of domesticity forthwith, and until such time as the court sees fit to hang you by your neck until dead. That seems fair. Oh, then I wasn't clear, was I? You, sir, are accused of murder and will be taking you away shortly. This will be very sad for you, and obviously for your manservant. Yes, obviously. So, just stay here and we'll be back for you soon. Cheerio! Do people actually say cheerio? Sir, is there anything I might do to assist you in this, your time of need? Well, if you could finish carving that ivory bust in my head. Sir, we've been over this. Ivory is highly illegal. Which I feel I must point out is especially relevant now. In wake of these recent accusations. So lazy. Gentlemen, a crime has been committed. And it can only be solved by me, the greatest detective in all of England. Oh, is that where we are? Allow me to introduce myself. Special Inspector Clever Ruse at your service. Well, if you're at my service, make me an egg. My god, has this man been deprived of his breakfast? That in itself is a tragedy, but not a crime as such. Nevertheless, it's the most important meal of the day. Who's responsible for this grievous error in judgment? That would be me. You look after this lad, do you? In a manner of speaking. So clearly this incident is your fault. Oh, I hadn't considered that angle. That's because you're not clever ruse, lad. Sorry, not sure I'm following the logic here. How is this my fault? Are we going with the tired old butler did it cliche? Bro, we know the tired old butler did do it. No, no, no. You misunderstand. Obviously, you're a man of breeding, sophistication, education. Oxford man, are you? Cambridge, actually. Oh. Well, we can't have everything, I suppose. In any case, they should have taught you. <laughs> Even at a bin line of school like Cambridge. It was recently ranked the fourth best university in the world. So not even worth a bronze then, right? Your master's safety and well-being is your responsibility. Consequently, it falls to you to exonerate his lordship. Really? I would have thought the great detective. Here, take this. It's the official Clever Rules My First Crime Scene Investigation Coloring Book. And that's colouring with a U, naturally. Naturally. This will guide even the most thick-witted Cambridge dunderhead through the process of forensic murder solvery. Essentially, it comes down to four elements. Motive, murder weapon, at least one corroborating witness, and proof of the suspect's sanity. Good luck with all that, Willikins. As you locate each of these, you may colour in, and that's colour with a U, the corresponding area of the page. When you've coloured the entire page, phone me, and I shall be along at once. Clever ruse, away! <coughs> oh, Willikins, did he just disappear in a cloud of smoke? <sighs> so it would appear. Or disappear, huh? Do you get it? Willikins? He's still there. It 
would appear that a brand new pair of rubber gloves, or hand wellies as Master Nick calls them, has fallen into the bin. I can't quite reach to turn him over, but I did manage to dislodge the man's wallet. That's the wallet I dislodged from our unfortunately deceased house guest. I'd need to pick it up to see it more closely. There's very little in here. The identification says his name is... oh, it's Errol. The general ruffian and ne'er-do-well who frequently burgles our home. There also appears to be a note here that says, In case of emergency, call this number. Well, that certainly sounds like a clue. This is Nick! Sir, I'm trying to determine who may have had a connection to the body in our entrance hall. Why on earth would you be answering a number that I found in the deceased's pocket? Errol. As you know, Willikins, Errol's my friend. But I did tell him that he'd better not rob us again or I'd bloody kill him. Sir, you've put me in a very awkward position here because I do appear to have found a motive for Errol's murder. However, that motive belongs to you. Finally, you did something right. No, sir, this means you're still very much a suspect. Well, obviously you're not going to say that to the detective, since you're duty-bound to protect me. So, I don't know, tell him someone else had a motive. I'm sure you can make up some lie or another. You somehow convinced my family you were a decent butler when you were hired, so you're obviously extremely skilled at deception. That detective fellow gave me this. It's meant to track my progress in gathering the four elements that can exonerate Master Nick. Motive, murder weapon, proof of sanity, and a witness. As of now, I've managed to locate a motive. I've always thought this thing was a bit unsettling, but I'm also fairly certain that there should be two of them. Surely one of them didn't just get up and walk away though, did it? And do I actually want an answer to this question? This was left by an activist of some sort. It appears to have been left here somewhere around the time our deceased friend arrived in the entrance hall. seems that someone attempted to deliver a package around the time of the murder. I wonder if the delivery person saw anything. It appears to have one of those bloody QR codes on it that everyone seems to think people actually use. This one looks more like an owl to me. This is where the birds live. I know how he feels. I want to vomit all the time too. It 
seems to have flown off the handle. I can relate, little garden implement. Ask the next latest ill-conceived project. One in a series, collect them all. Is his so-called hedge maze of doom. These are the plans for phase two. By stage six, I believe the intention is to incorporate the whole of England to one massive, impassable maze. So, we all have that to look forward to, I suppose. Azaleas, that's the good luck in the coming fiscal year. This hedge maze began as a topiary animal, a very tall, very square snake. Master Nick believes this is a TARDIS. A vast improvement over that time he believed it was a porter loo. Dare you enter Nick Hall's Maze of Doom. So nice of Master Nick to offer a choice. He doesn't usually bother. I believe, in this instance, I daren't. This has been struck by lightning 37 times, which is three less times than I have. It's just a jumble of numbers and letters which apparently communicate some vital piece of information to the Royal Mail. It says 00D4L4Y. Neither rain, nor snow, nor glom of knit will keep me from fetching Master Nick's very important hardware store circulars. Violets after dinner parties, and they're not blue, they're bloody violet. Hibiscus, she's the daughter of Sergeant Susan Fusion. It's been a right argy bargy out there this morning. I'd almost describe it as a full on foofra. What on earth is going on? Well, ma'am, it seems there's been a murder in the entrance hall. We are currently looking into who the victim is and what exactly happened, but you'll be happy to know that Master Nick is more or less fine. Well, in future, see that you keep your so-called murders someplace where I can't hear them. I nearly couldn't go back to sleep after all that racket. Miss Petunia, by now I'm certain you're aware of the murder that took place. Only two rooms away from your rather stationary spot here. I wouldn't be certain that I'm aware of anything at my age. Touché, Mum. Here, what if I told you about speaking French in this house? Excuse me, Mum. Sorry to interrupt, but there's been this murder... There's a lot of murders in there. World's a right horrible place it is. Not like in my day. In my day, people was more lucky to drop dead of black lung or the influenza. Spanish influenza, of course. I can deduce from this somewhat problematic answer that you did not see the murder which took place two rooms from this very location. Well reasoned.
an ancient ancestor of Master Nyx, with whom he was also once... Industries, a subsidiary of Corpco International LLC. If you're calling to inquire about a delivery, please say the 64 digit tracking number now. 613. Or if you'd prefer to speak to an operator, simply say operator. Oh, thank heavens. Operator. I heard you say operator. Is this correct? Yes. Please hold. An operator will be with you shortly. Well, I was walking through the hill. I heard a wail. was mighty shrill. A weeping made by the twin pines wall. Heard her sob. I saw her look in the winter dawn. Freaked the suckers to the freaking dawn. Uh, put my love at your school. Y'all just like this. Six verses in your hands. Pop, pop, pop. Stuff bringers intercontinental. This is Deirdre. How may I help you? Good morning. I'd like to speak with the delivery driver who attempted a delivery to Nick Hall this morning. I believe he may have seen something relevant to a criminal investigation. Do you have the delivery slip that the driver left behind? I have, yes. And could you describe to me the animal that the QR code on the slip most closely resembles? An owl. Definitely an owl. Good, good. Right, now then. What is your postcode? Of course. Our postcode is 00D4L4Y. Good, good. Now then, I'll need the name of two of any of the recipient's direct ancestors. Well, there's good great Aunt Petunia who lives downstairs. Right, that's one. Lady Beatrice. Her painted likeness smiles upon me every time I pass through our dining room. Excellent, sir. That was all I required. Oh, really? Only that? I shall now connect you to the delivery driver you're trying to reach. Please hold. <sighs> Very well. Intercontinental, this is Deirdre. How may I help you? Oh, no. Hello again, Deirdre. I thought I was to be connected to the delivery driver. Yes, speaking. A lady can drive a truck and answer phones, you know. I suppose you truly can have it all, then. Listen, there was a rather unpleasant incident here at the hall this morning, and I was wondering if you'd seen anything untoward during your visit. You mean the murder? Yes, that is exactly what I mean. As it happens, I did see the incident, yes, sir. However, in order to provide you with further details, I shall need you to fill out Inquiry Form 6B and speak with my manager. <sighs> I'm just fooling with you, sir. What, do you need me to call the police and promise to report what I saw as an official witness? That would be wonderful, yes, thank you. And if it's not too much trouble, could you tell me what you saw first? You wouldn't believe me if I told you, sir. Goodbye! Well, you can stay out of there. That area is off limits to you. Excuse me, Master Nick. Willikins, you heard that quirky detective. Stop running your bloody gob and go on around 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 away to me of this crime. Also, I think he said something about a colouring book. Ah, yes. My goals have indeed been clearly demarcated in the form of a child's activity book. Though surely you mean colouring, sir? Why, what did I say? May I assist you in some way, sir? With what? You mean apart from exonerating you of the murder charges. The what now? Never mind. I assume you'll ring the bell if you need me. 
You should never assume, Willikins. It makes an arse out of... Wait a tick, that'd be assume, wouldn't it? Sir, I must insist that you allow me to look under your bed. Willikins, I've decided to try being indecisive. I always wanted to be a logical paradox. Really, sir? Is that what you've always wanted to be today? And so, in answer to the question, may I look under the bed, I say to you, I don't know. You don't know? That's right. Sir, you realise I'm doing all of this to exonerate you of the rather serious murder charges that are currently hanging over you. Then you better help me make up my mind quickly, hadn't you? <sighs> Very well. Yes, I may look under your bed. Not good enough. I need you to introduce some kind of random element. A device of some sort that will make the decision for me in a satisfyingly unpredictable fashion. Sir, you're just needlessly complicating things at this point. Oh, you always say that. Now off you go. Well, you can stay out of there. That area is off limits to you. Sir, the corpse in our entrance hall. I thought it was a foyer. Foyer? Foyer. Cool. How do you say that anyway? We'll circle back to that. My concern is the gaping hole in said corpse, and I was hoping you might have some insight as to what may have created it. Willikins, what have I told you about hope? You say that hope is the thing with feathers, and I should consider myself allergic to feathers. Too right. Except when I'm tending to your pet budgie. Now the budgie's the exception that proves the rule, innit? Sir, I've determined who had the most likely motive to murder poor Errol, and I'm afraid it doesn't look too good for you. How's that? Well, sir, you told me directly that you wanted to kill him. Right. And now he's dead. I'm not following. The authorities are likely to believe that you committed this heinous crime, sir. I don't see how that's my problem. Well, you wouldn't, would you? Sir, it may please you to know that a lady from a delivery service of some kind has agreed to serve as a material witness in the forthcoming murder investigation. Why on earth would you think that would please me? You clearly don't know anything about the sort of things that please me. Like ice lollies and boiled sweets. How very English of you, sir. Yes, I thought so. I don't suppose you have any sort of documented proof of your own sanity lying about, sir. What makes you think I'm sane, you will again? <laughs> because that would diminish the very real struggle undertaken by genuinely mentally ill people. You're not insane, sir. You're just an arsehole. I feel like I should be offended by that, Willikins. Am I offended by that? Oh, probably, but then you noticed something shiny and forgot all about it. Forgot all about what? Sir, I must insist that you allow me to look under your bed. Willikins, I've decided to try being indecisive. Willikins, stay out of there. That area is off limits to you. What the fuck? Sir, I must. You wish 
shared candy, same. I don't know. I wish I had snack food, not candy. I need to snack. Right? Well. This should fit Master Nick's rather arbitrary requirements for a device to help him make decisions. I'd prefer it if the thing said yes, but we can't have everything, I suppose. Or if you're me, anything. Yeah, sir. What the hell is this thing? It's a, uh, magic eight ball, sir. What is it? Electrical or something? Do I need to switch it on? Oh, I see. It's already on. That's clever. Indeed. Now then, magic eight ball, guide me with your 80 wisdom. Tell me if I should let Willikins do that thing, what he's whinging on about. Saving your life, sir? Right, that one. And the answer is... Well, this may come as a bit of a surprise to you, Willikins, but the answer is no. Really? Which means you lose. You don't get the thing you want. Uh, what thing was that again? I most emphatically did not want to look under your bed, sir. Well then, the eight ball has spoken. I order you to look under my bed this instant. Very good, sir. Somehow I always knew this disturbing little fellow might one day be involved in something untoward, and now I'm nearly certain of it. If there's any possible chance this is the murder weapon, I should not touch it with my bare hands. Wilkins, what are you doing out there? I was just picking up this object under your bed. Uh, yes, of course. Only, could you not do that? Sir? That is to say, could you go and wait in the dressing room for a moment first? As a good chap. Sir, I must say, this isn't making you appear to be less guilty. Uh, just go in there and wait until I give the all clear. Then I promise you can have whatever rubbish you find under there. Very good, sir. Absolutely certain, but I believe the plumbing has backed up again. There's only one place the excess water can go in this house where that happens. <sighs> okay, it's safe.
Much as I'd like to crawl into my subterranean hole and hide from all this, it would appear to be flooded. There's my alleged murder weapon. I almost respect the little bugger's survival instincts. Almost. I can't reach it from here. managed to retrieve the line before that rodent gnawed completely through it. That little blight is going to be trouble. This may be the first time in all my years of working here that I've used poison as a verb and not in the way I'd always imagined it either. That dead rat won't even be in the top ten smelliest things I've had to deal with down there, sadly. The diameter of the gnome's pointy cap would seem to match the diameter of the wound on our foyer corpse. I believe I may indeed have obtained the murder weapon. After a considerable fashion... No, I haven't played Deponia. Not yet. I don't think I'm really gonna like Deponia, to be honest. Um. I mean, I'm still willing to try it, but. I think it'll turn into into like one of those games that I play just to play. Like I think what Monkey Island is gonna be like. Like I'm gonna return to Monkey Island, but I don't think I'm really gonna, why not? Um, Cause I kinda don't like comedy point and clicks. Yeah, it's literally this, but better. Well, this is a free-to-play game. Pretty sure it's only made by, like, one person. Um. Deponia just looks boring, honestly. And I don't mean that, like, in any type of disrespectful way. But, yeah, I think comedy point and clicks are just fucking boring. That's why I tend to only play ones that are, like, mystery or, like, horror-oriented. Under the cotton ball in this bottle is another cotton ball. It's cotton balls all the way down, Winnikins. These were prescribed by Master Nick's personal psychiatrist, Dr. Gesund. The label details the type of medication, recommended dosage, and the contact number for the good doctor. I mean, I'll try the pony, yeah.
minute, shrinking doctor. How may I assist you? I beg your pardon, I was trying to reach a Dr. Gesund. Ja, speaking. Dr. Gesund at your service. In England? Terribly sorry about that. I've been brushing up on my German accent, you know. It seems I'm taken much more seriously when people believe I'm German for some reason. How may I help you? Good morning. Willikins the butler here. I should like to request sanity paperwork for Nick of Nick Hall, if I may. Please and thank you. Nick of Nick Hall, is it? Well, I can't give that information to the likes of you, of course. Ah, yes. Medical ethics. What? No. Because you're a lowly servant. However, as it happens, I issued just such a certificate to the patient's only surviving relative. Right. Thank you. What's your favorite so far? My favorite what? My favorite point and click? I have no idea. Thank you for gifting that sub to Alexis. Thank you, baby shark. I have no idea what my favorite point and click is. I could probably guess I'd probably say Lamplight City. That's probably my favorite. That's a murder mystery. Um, it's pretty recent. I think I played it last year. Um, and it's like Choices Matter too. I like that one a fucking lot. It's the one that like stands out from all the rest, but I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite. Just hurry up and get through this, Willikins. It's for the greater good. Just lie back and think of England. Good morning, beautiful. How beautiful is it? That and so much more. I scarcely have the words to fully quantify your loveliness, my dear. Well, perhaps you'd have learned them if you hadn't gone to bloody Cambridge. Indeed. So, my lovely. Would it be too out of line to request a very small favor from the most stunningly gorgeous creature I've ever laid eyes on? Oh, well, I suppose not. But you'll have to do something for me. Name it and it's yours. Anything for you. Oh, give us a little turn round. I beg your pardon? Just uh, give us a good look at the whole package, if it gets my meaning. 
nice and slow. Oh my god. <sighs> Very well. Ooh, delightful. That one's going in the old WB, I can assure you. WB, Mum? The second word is bank. First word rhymes with that. Now let's see. I hid that paper some time ago for young Nick's own protection, and I wrote down where I hid it on this paper. Here you are, dear. This appears to be in some sort of code. Yes, that's right. I used a decoder ring I got from an American cartoon show I rather fancy. Unfortunately, I lost that ring, so as you'll have to get another. But that shouldn't be too difficult for the likes of you. I wouldn't have expected you to be a fan of American cartoon programs, miss. What you don't know about me could fill a bloody town, boy. Now bugger off, I'm done with you now, and I've important business to attend to, yes. The fuck? Right? Not like this. Not like this. I just realized when the new Nancy Drew game comes out. Wisteria, that's the name of the packages. That's not that's not point and click. This hedge maze began as a topiary animal, a very tall, very square I'm snake. I'm gonna have to break the streak. Cause it's not a point and click game. And roses. I don't think roses hold any particular symbolic meaning. That's a 3D adventure game. Daffodils, roses and carols. That's okay. Honestly, I wasn't intending on this being a, a streak anyway. Denny, it comes out tomorrow. I say, might I have a word with you, please? Of course, Mr. Wilkins. Apologies for the noise. So I was just studying for my botany final. What Holy shit. Say? She's goth. A hedge maze, is it? Wonderful work you're doing here. I'm just doing as the plans instruct me to. I want to get your pre-order on, now, Denny. We gotta talk first, sis. It. We have got to talk before you spend any type of money on that game, Denny. Please, <laughs> Denny, 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 Denny. Have you seen the like the launch trailer, Denny? It looks so bad. Maybe you should, like, not. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Um, I still really want to play it, but that's because I'm a diehard Nancy Drew fan. But, like, holy fuck. You saw the teasers and that's it. There's, like, a fucking, like, trailer for it. This, okay... Uh, I'm really close to the end of this game, so I'm just gonna finish this, and then, um, then I'll, I'll show you the trailer I'm talking about. Yeah, it's interesting, as in, like... Yeah, it's on the Her Interactive YouTube channel. I want to watch it again now that I've had some sleep since the last time I watched it. 
Okay, then don't watch it. But it's... I mean, if you got the money, then go ahead. But... It just looks really rough. Like, the characters look... Awful. They look so bad. It's not even funny how bad that they look. Like, I would rather have the stiff animations of, like, the animations from the very beginning of the series. Like, the animations from yesterday's the final scene. Like, I would rather have those animations than how plastic and like rubbery they look oh my god it's tragic <clears throat> i'm not saying don't buy it i'm just saying know what you're getting into because it's not going to be like the other nancy drew games and apparently it's not even point and click it's like it's going to be like life is strange or it's going to be like point and clicky but you walk around and shit. Rough. Just rough. Just a whole bunch of rough. I'll just draw myself a straight path to the center of the maze. And that's center and not center, obviously. You'd think with a new show they'd make a better game? What? There's a new TV show. What's this then? The show's not just some amendments to your ever expanding. The people who made the games project, have nothing sir. to do with the show. I don't remember signing off on these. No, sir, you're signing off on them now. Am I? Oh, it would appear that I am. Well spotted, Willikins. Indeed, sir. Emma Roberts was Nancy Drew. I thought that was old. Would you please come out again so I can speak with you? What can I do for you? Good morning. I have some revisions from his lordship. And I do hope you don't see this as a rejection of the fine work you've done here thus far. Well, this seems a bit more direct than his lordship's other suggestions. But this is clearly his signature, so off I go then. Oh my. Good heavens, the girls are natural. There we are, precisely to his lordship's specifications. some yeah they they talked about how they were they changed the voice yup
Who knew so much of this job would involve having to plug things in? Excuse me. Extremely rare double headed hay for Same. Yeah, it doesn't look good, but I hope that it's I hope the puzzles are good I really hope the puzzles are good um that's about all I have to say I hope it doesn't run like shit because the trailers would convince me otherwise there we've gathered the five components for the professor's machine from the five corners of the globe now we can finally stop baron malevolent Meow. what is it astro cat right back. Meow. oh no a deadly dick bat hey kids join the sarcasters you get all this cool stuff including a nifty decoder ring it's easy and it's fun well, good. Now I can order myself a collectible keepsake from that children's cartoon. God, I hope none of my classmates from Cambridge can see what I've made of my life. Central, home of Dottie Patrol and our exciting one-of-a-kind Dakota ring. Didn't I speak with you earlier today? Not unless you dialed 999. Wait, is that Willikins? Hello again, this is Beryl. Are you the only telephone operator in England? Cool, it feels that way sometimes, doesn't it? Rather. Now then, I'd like to order... A Dakota ring? I guessed it was that, since that's the only thing we sell here. According to our records, we already sent one of those to a Petunia of Nick Hall some time ago. Were you looking for a free replacement to be sent to the same address? Uh, yes, that would work nicely, thank you. Righto. We'll get that in the post by the fastest means we have available. No need. I'm certain it'll be in our post box by the time I make it all the way out there. Master Nick insisted that we spare the postman the strain of having to walk all the way up to the hall. Clearly this isn't a concern when it comes to the likes of me, however. Anyway, thanks. Goodbye. <clears throat> what the fuck? I wanna boo this game? What game? The one I'm playing? Or the one we were talking about?
I feel like it's gonna run like shit. I don't even know if I can stream it. To be honest. I have a huge feeling that I'm not gonna be able to stream it. And that's very tragic. Ah, this would appear to be the all-important decoder ring upon which my entire day now hinges for some inexplicable reason. The note says that Master Nick's sanity certificate is in the library portion of his drawing room, inside the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Very Big Fish. Trailer, yeah, it does not look good. They were also deleting any negative comments on their Facebook. It was just, <laughs> it's just not, it's not looking too good for her interactive right now. It's very, very sad. Because they have new management. Look at you, did you see? Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, they let they let go of like a shit ton of their staff. Um, and they have new management. And he is just fucking it up. <laughs> He's just fucking up. <clears throat> Excuse me, everything that company has kind of worked for, he's just tossing it, which is really, really tragic. That makes me sad to think about. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think if they were just more honest with their fan base, because they haven't made, <coughs> excuse me, they haven't made a, um, a Nancy Drew game in four years. Their last one was Sea of Darkness, which came out in 2015. So, their fans have been waiting a long time. Um, and they said that it was supposed to come out in 2017, then they said it was supposed to come out in 20, like, 18, then they said all this other stuff they they've been postponing it postponing it and pretty much just kept their fans in the dark and then not even that like all of that and for what for a game that literally <laughs> like it's one thing for you to treat your fan base like shit and all that but <laughs> to do that and then the game isn't even good like I don't tell him. Ah, finally, official documentation of Master Nick's sanity. That's just sad. That's all four of Clever Roos's rather condescending puzzle pieces found. I suppose I should phone him now and be condescended to further. It's not so much that the game looks bad. It's just the fact that they've kept their fans in the dark. For four fucking years. And it looks bad. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's still warm from where the dog was lying. Like. Yeah, it looks bad. But I still want to play it. Right? But it's like, fuck. Like. I have a lot more patience and like, I guess, tolerance than a lot of other people. 
And there's so many people that from just watching the trailer alone, like the last one, they're like, I was going to pre-order this, but I'm not. And like, it's not like a thing where like, you know, when people find out that a game's only available on Epic, they're like, I was going to buy this, but now I'm going to torrent it. Like, no, you weren't actually going to buy it. Shut the fuck up. But this is like people who were literally have been waiting for this game for so long we're going to buy it then they saw this and they were like okay this is not what was promised <clears throat> excuse me you've reached level rules yes hello this is willikins the butler from nick hall yes you must be very proud We spoke earlier at length. You came here and told me what evidence I'd need to present in order to solve the murder that took place earlier today. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You've located that evidence, then. More or less, yes. And said evidence exonerates your lord and master? As far as you know, yes. Excellent. I shall be there momentarily. Meet me at the scene of the crime. Very good. <clears throat> Obviously, some of this evidence paints Master Nick in a, shall we say, less than innocent light. But I think I can accidentally omit those details when presenting it to Mr. Roos. Excellent work, chap. Top notch. Couldn't have done it better myself. You didn't. <laughs> yes, but now comes the most important bit. Assembling this data into an official Clever Rules information packet for easy consumption, processing, and adaptation into various forms of highly lucrative media. So you're going to take the hard work I've done, scrawl your name at the top, and take credit for the whole thing. <laughs> it's a bit more complicated than that. Is it? Explain it to me then. No time for that. I have an important call to make. I shall be in this adjoining room here, not to be disturbed. Who does he think he is ordering me about like that? That's my job. Off I go. Uh, okay. Okay. What's up, Tiffany? What's the code we agreed upon for when someone we don't want hanging about is hanging about? Well, I, I can't remember it either. That's why I asked you. Don't forget it. Eh? The point is, someone is in the room now, and I can't say anything. <laughs> the body of an ass. Yes, I have all the evidence that clears Lord Nick's name. No, I didn't need to lift a finger. I convinced the idiot butler to do it for me. <laughs> He's quite the idiot. And also extremely ugly. Well, that's just hurtful. And get this. He actually believed I was affiliated with law enforcement. <laughs> didn't ask to see a single credential. <laughs> ugly idiot. <sighs> of course I'm going to bug it down the loo. What better way to destroy the evidence, assuring his inevitable execution, and then I shall have unfettered access to those bearer bonds. No, I don't know what they are, but I know they're valuable. Something to do with the war, I think. The war. Anyway, that's my sinister plan. <laughs> but look at me dominating the conversation. How have you been? I see. Yes. Oh, and how is Uncle Alfie? Still dead, then. Oh. Good heavens, I must call emergency services immediately. They're playing us. They're playing us. Emergency services, how may I direct your call? Help me, bitch. Hello, I wonder if I might... 
Wait a minute, that's not Beryl, is it? Uh, well spotted, sir. I can see from our display that you're calling from a rather posh mansion, so you may not comprehend this. But working folk are entitled to a day off once in a while. We are, despite the way you lot treat us, human. I... yes, of course. As the personal servant to a rather difficult master, I... Are you taking the piss, sir? I beg your pardon? We ain't servants. We've no use for that archaic class-based nonsense here. Now, what was it that you wanted? I must speak with Detective Inspector Bobby at once. <laughs> A servant? Speak to an inspector? Not on my watch, sir. D.I. Bobby is much too busy to waste her time on the likes of you. Really, this is rather urgent. Well, if it's so bloody urgent, I'm sure your master will have no trouble phoning back. Well, that was a real roller coaster of class politics. I suppose I'll have to convince Master Nick to phone for the inspector. <coughs> she is rude. Sir, if you would, the authorities require a, well, an authority to convince them to return to the hall. And I suppose that means you. Sir, are you in there? Oh, I'll show you. Oh, really? Emergency service. Good morning. Master Nick is convinced he's a vampire and it would break his heart to discover otherwise. That's... that's how. Hell have you been? I was about to ask you the same question, sir. Although I may not have phrased it quite so aggressively, depending on how I was feeling at the moment. I was lying in my bed wondering why I was feeling so bloody peckish when I realized you never actually fed me today. So, at considerable risk to my person, I came down here to see if we were somehow out of food. Not only did I discover that we were not, which therefore means you're just as lazy as I always suspected you to be, but I also found the hole in a state that I can only describe as a complete disaster. Yes, sir. Only I have been devoting considerable time and energy to clearing you of these murder charges. And to that end, I need you to phone the police at, as you would say, WAMPS. Ah, oh, no you don't. I'm not lifting a bloody finger for you until you answer for this mess. Starting with this room here, the food... laboratory? The kitchen, sir. Right, that thing. Now, I know you were down here at least twice today, and as far as I can tell, you just sort of wandered away without preparing me any food. Why did you do that? Where's my food? And most importantly, why did you do that? <sighs> because I'm a rubbish butler. Go on. Who is terrible at everything. Correct. Now to the wine cellar for further admonishments. Oh, good. Now then, I very generously granted you this personal living space when you wouldn't stop grumbling about sharing a kennel with my little dog, Willikins. Extremely generous of you, yes, sir. And now I see that you've converted it to a bloody swimming hole. We're not zoned for that, Willikins. Explain yourself. Because I'm literally the most worthless, thick-headed soul to ever draw Me. breath. Got it in one. Or possibly two. I can't be asked to count. Right, now it's on to the front garden. Sir, this all seems a bit needlessly complicated. It would seem that way to you, wouldn't it? And now we come to this. 
You do realize that is meant to be a hedge maze of doom, don't you, Willikins? Only now there's this obvious gaping hole in the thing that any idiot could easily escape from. Possibly even you. Because I'm a jerk, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. A complete knee-biter. There, that wasn't so hard now, was it? Humiliating myself three times in a row? No, sir, that's just a typical day here at Nick Hall. Too right. Now, what pointless thing was it that you wanted me to do? I need you to phone the police, sir. It turns out that clever Roos fellow is attempting to scam us. What, like in that movie where that bloke's head exploded? No, sir, that's scanners. What, like the Hulk's secret identity? No, sir, that's Bruce Banner. Oh, what, that trolley little man what's always on Hollywood Squares? No, sir, that's Bruce Valanche. What, like my fourth favorite flavor of Dorito? I don't believe Dorito is spelled that way, sir, but no, that's Cool Ranch. What, like when Marge Simpson had a mental breakdown? No, sir, that's Rancho Relaxo. Constable Bobby returned to Nick Hall, whereupon she was regaled with an accounting of the true events that unfolded that fateful morning. There I was, sequestered in my chambers. Willikins had ruined my brekkie twice and was almost certainly about to muck it up again. I got bored waiting for his inevitable failure, so I ventured downstairs of my own renaissance. So don't you mean recognizance? No. There I met Errol, who, in keeping with tradition, was stealing my newspaper to have a look at the page four girl. Surely you mean the page six girl? No. Unfortunately, before I could forthwith and heretofore arrive upon the scene in question, Willikins had got there first. But, sir, I was clearly in the kitchen. Not you, my little dog, Willikins. You have a dog called Willikins. Doesn't that get confusing? Not to me. Him. Apparently, Errol was not expecting the presence of a personage of the canine persuasion and, startled, stumbled backwards, impaling himself on my commemorative garden schmack. Impaling himself fatally to death until he died. And since I didn't want the authorities taking my little dog away, I hit him up here. The end. That all makes perfect sense, sir, but there's one thing. Ah, oh, no, you don't. The murder is solved and I'm innocent. Don't you go all Columbo on me now. It's a fair cop. Unfortunately, we shall now have to bring someone else in for questioning. Ah, yes, the so-called detective, Clever Roots. What? Who? Never heard of him. I meant the dog. You, my little murdering fellow, are coming with me. <coughs> oh, no! Will Nick's dog be executed for murder? Was the vast majority of this game actually a pointless waste of everyone's time? And what of poor Errol? Still dead. I'm actually not sure why I'm asking these questions, because the story is over now. Roll credits!
Okay, so that was that game. Um, that was The Adventures of Nick and Willikins, which is on Steam. It's free to play. Um, yeah, it's cute and funny.